thank you very much. Oh, you don't you actually don't see anything with this slide. Okay. So we are Falcondale and we are talking about we will be talking about how the integration of quantum machine learning techniques can help SME grade scoring, of course, in SME lending. That is what actually brings us here today. So the first thing is, what are grade scores? This is something we are all familiar with. We have better, worse grade scores. I'm a startup founder with a three-year-old daughter, so my grade score is great. So this is something we've all seen somewhere around, right? So, but what is behind this? There's a lot of models, there's a lot of rules, sometimes more sophisticated, less sophisticated. At the end of the day, it's classification models, okay? This is something that it's trying to separate good payers from bad payers. We have all of these dots. Imagine all of these dots are good and bad payers. So we are trying to find a way of separating the good from the bad. This could be companies, this could be people, this could be large, small companies, everywhere. So the first option is just trying to draw a line between those dots, right? And here we have logistic regression, something that has been used in banking for the last 60, 70 years, and banks still use today. Why? Because it's really reliable. You can understand straightforward how every piece of the logistic regression is used to decide who is good and who is bad. You can explain that to regulators. You can explain that to non-technical people. But in a lot of times, this is not enough because uh, situations are sometimes difficult to separate. So data is not that straightforward related to the, uh, to the target variable, to, to the good and bad payments. So one way of solving that is adding what we call a kernel. So, a kernel basically represents 2D in 3D, right? So in this second figure that you see right there in 3D, looks like the points are more separable, right? So you speak about surfaces instead of 2D, two dimensions. Even if you have these representativeness in three dimensions, traditional kernels are not enough in some adverse categories. And I'm sorry to say SMEs are adverse scenarios for lending. So we'll see later on why. But in mo more often than not, we don't have it easy when trying to decide automatically what SMEs will be good payers and which, were, which ones will not. So what does quantum do with this here, right? So in this, instead of having this 3D that you see here, we take it to the next level. So the image that you see right there is called a block sphere, right? So we go beyond the 3D kernels. We go beyond, this is a kernel that you would see in any machine learning model. And in the, in, in the block sphere, their points look to be a little bit more separable, right? So we use vectors within those kernels, and we use quantum kernels to improve the efficiency of the models. So in, by using these kernels that I was just mentioning, I'm not going to bore you with the technical details. That's not what you're here for. So we achieve extra accuracy. So our models perform better, the like classical models. Why? Because we represent data better. There's a lot of been, there has been a lot of talks today about getting data, how to use it. So getting data is, will get you to one point, but then it's how you use that data to decide. And a lot of that is in how you, use, you represent that data. All of those data points related to the credit behavior of whoever you have in your database to train. And quantum gives you this extra scoring, which then in, this, in decisions, in loans that you grant, at the end of the day, it's a lot of difference in profit for these companies. So they, this quantum extra accuracy will help you screen better the applicants. And those, those points that you see there, which is the fuzzy areas, what you call the fuzzy areas, areas in the data where separation between good and bad pairs are not that easy. It's not that easy. There is what quantum can make a huge difference. So, by using these techniques, by using quantum computing, by expressing your data in kernels, you can have a boost in performance, even against state-of-the-art machine learning models, even with as uh, small as 500 data points. There's a lot of gain that you can have by representing the data this way. And as I said before, adverse situations is what we have in SME lending. Why? Well, these are some of the reasons. Some of them were covered in the, in the talks and in the panels that we had already today. So data scarcity, some of, the, some, of the, um, some of the SMEs are new, so especially with the smaller ones. Or if they are not, credit bureaus, data providers are not that prepared as we have with consumer lending. So any Equifax experience will know every, everything about ourselves, right? So for companies, that's not actually true. So we have data scarcity, we have low correlations with the credit behavior. That is, the data that we have actually is not very predictive about what co if companies are going to pay or not, if they want to pay or not. 
and we have heavily unbalanced data sets. What that means is we have a lot of good payers and a small part of bad payers. But that small part of bad payers could be really, really detrimental to our company. Building a model in that situation, it's tricky. And then we have unreliable credit scores, as I was mentioned before. So picking an off-the-shelf credit score will just give you in a situation where we're offering money to companies that don't need it. So everyone will offer money to those companies. How can you differentiate from the market? How can you go beyond that? So under this scenario, a lot of lenders don't trust automatic decision making. So they have excessive default, adverse selection. That means when you, in, well, you say, OK, I'm going to solve this problem by increasing the interest rate. You end up with the companies that will actually take any money you can give them at any price. So you have excessive default. These companies actually don't pay back. And low conversion rates. So if you go very strict because you don't trust it, then you have 5% approval rate, a lot of cost of acquisition. And then they fall back to manual revision. So they say, OK, let's start screening all of the ones in the middle. It's basically manual, right? So you have a, an automatic layer, but you end up decisioning by manual revisions, one after the other. So then you have different skills in scaling. This is really costly by, the, by the, 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 the hours. And unfair rates sometimes, right? So you're not able to discriminate or to actually give an, uh, an attractive rate throughout the scope of companies. Um, so if you want to safely implement automatic decision systems, and this is something that we, has been covered also today, so you need to be able to correctly separate between good and bad payers. We normally measure this by Gini or by KS, right? Statistical stuff, not important right now. So the problem is that you can also not only rely on financial data, you need other kind of data. So digital footprints, the gentleman just before me said they used 50 different data sources, right? That's a lot. <laughs> But probably it's that, that's working for them, right? That, that gives them different perspectives. So quantum basically helps you bring that perspective into your model correctly, right? Using all of the data. And then it should be unbiased and ethical, of course. We need to comply with regulations. And fixed to the lender's risk appetite, which is really important. Why do I say this? Because not all providers cater for the same market. Otherwise, we will be cannibalizing ourselves, right? So there will be, um, there will be providers seeking to learn to those Lend to those really risky SMEs, right? In commercial, in consumer banking, the, the equivalent is payday loans, right? So the same decision, the same risk profile will not mean the same for different lenders. So whatever we build needs to be tailored to whom we are targeting, to our target market. So how can quantum machine learning, that's QML there, um, achieve this while provide a seamless experience, something we've also dealt with today. So the, 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 we don't have the company waiting two or three days for the decision. So let me get, explain this with an example so I don't get into too much technical stuff. Um, so we had a, a client that approached us, huge rejection rates, huge rejection rates, high acquisition costs, and a very narrow funnel. When I say narrow funnel, is a lot of, a lot of applicants started, really, really few actually got to the loan. Um, so we have some numbers here, a 20% approval rate, that's not the conversion rate. Okay, this is the ones approved. Then you have the, the applicant to actually take the loan. Then we have more than 300 features to build the model. What I'm trying to explain with this is they had data. It's not that they didn't have. And they had 10 million euro per month, more, more or less, in this embarrassment. So what did we achieve in this scenario? So we increased the granted loans rate by 18%. We kept the default level below the previous value, because it's really easy to increase your approval rate if you're going to take in more default. We didn't. We even actually lowered it. Basically, because they kept the same default, but now distributed in more loans, right? So the same numerator, bigger denominator. And we approved, we approved loans that represent 6.5% of their monthly revenue. So that could be small, but when you are trying to, for 10 years, to, provide, to actually pr progress in a market, to win, more ta to, uh, to win more market share, this could be a real difference. And of course, at the end of the day, this is a lot of profit, and your PNL looks really good. So, how did we achieve that? So how did they achieve that with that? So they had the original decision system with the 20% rate that we talked about. They, that stayed the same. And then all of the rejections, because their model was really tight, one of the, one of the options these, these companies tend to fall back, those went through the quantum model. And all of the misclassified good payers were, were spotted by the quantum machine learning model. And they were provided with an offer. So they kept their internal decision model that they had been developing for these 10 years. And all of the people that were misclassified then went through our model. And in that case, we were able to spot all of the ones we saw before with really, really good rates, and they received offers. So 
these are the people that are right below the approval zone, that are really difficult to separate from the bad payers. And those are the ones that actually need the offer. So your conversion rates will be better. Um, so this can be, became a fully integrated system. So with the lead generation, they bought it from multiple different places. Then they have their own decisioning system, and then they go through the quantum machine learning model. So there's a lot of techniques there that are involved in that part. And then you go to the final decision, right? So you actually rescue these applicants from being left out from the process, because they were actually good. So what we're trying to get at is there's a common problem when lenders try to expand their portfolio. You start, you start with your initial offering, you offer to prime customers. I'm using consumer because it's easier, right? In common, it's a little bit different, but it is similar. So you start with prime customers, right? So you consolidate your market, but then you want to expand. You will raise VC capital, you want to move forward. And that's where the problem starts, right? So you need to get into the near prime, even subprime sectors. And that's where defaults actually start to rise. So when you try to expand and go beyond those initial loans, you, you face problems. You start having uh, companies not paying, people not paying. So then you have this excessive default here, and everything stops, right? So the, the, the monthly cash flow starts to go down. We're starting to have defaults. Everyone is paranoid. And what do they do? Well, we just become more strict, and we go down. So we were better than how we were before, right? So we had less default. We were more profitable. We're happy where we are. The problem with that is you stagnate. You stay there. So you have no way of actually incorporating new market without increasing risk. So there's where quantum machine learning actually comes into place to change this graph into that graph, right? That would be ideal. So I can increase my market without actually increasing default. So how do you do that? Well, one option is how we saw before. You actually use the model that you had up to the consolidation step. And when you try to incorporate new markets, you actually do it through quantum, who is better able to separate those pairs. You don't actually relax your own criteria, but you bring in a quantum model that is able to actually get you to the expansion phase and maturity in the near prime sector without in taking any more defaulters. So you, ke you keep your default level, but you have a higher approval level. So that's how expanding with quantum machine learning looks like. Um, this is one option, the one I said before. Of course, quantum can be also be used as a standalone model. That means you don't have any, mo any previous model. You would just want to use quantum. At the end of the day, it's a machine learning model with steroids, right? With the quantum kernels that actually makes it better with these techniques incorporated into them. So you take all of these data sources of the 50 that Novaland had before, you run them through the quantum machine learning model, which is tailored again for the, for the market and for the risk appetite, and then you have your improved and scalable model. That's also an option for someone that actually doesn't have a, a model right away. And the other option is, which a lot of our clients choose, is combination with your own models. One of the things Sergio was mentioning just now is you, you don't outsource your own risk model, right? You want to have your secret sauce. That's reasonable. You want to differentiate from the market. One option of bringing quantum, if you don't have the internal team to do it, which is more often than not, it's actually using quantum as an extra layer in combination with your own models. So that means you can use it as an extra feature from the model, so you just put as a, one more variable, as one more source. You can use it for those cases in which you are unsure. So you have your approvals, your rejections, really good, really bad payers. You have a gray zone in the middle. There's where you go with quantum. Or you can have it for a second layer decision. That means once you've approved someone, you need to decide what interest rate to give them, what, how many installments, what the term you're going to offer them. You know, default doesn't behave the same depending on all of those things. So that's where quantum also can offer a really good tailored decision. And what do we have to offer? So I'll take this minute that I have left to actually present the company. So we have this model that I saw before called Savior, where we actually run through quantum after the, the, the company has already decided. And we pick the rejected, the rejected applicants. We screen them. We give back. These are the good ones. Offer them alone. We also do custom-made and ad hoc quantum models fitted to what our clients need. And we have also partnerships, because we, already, we also know this doesn't solve every problem, right? So one other problem that we have is how to actually get companies to apply. So one option is improve your engagement customer service, something that has been discussed a lot today. We have a partnership with Conco that builds AI agents tailored for credit funnels. So they actually, they actually avoid companies leaving and people leaving the, the journey while they, have, they are still applying. For example, they need to connect open banking, something that we know causes a lot of dropouts. So well, they convince them to actually do it, showing what they can get at it with the offers. And we have SquareGen, 
which basically uses AI for the explainability of decisions, generates rationales of why companies or people were rejected or approved. This is really useful for non-technical stakeholders to actually go through an explanation of what the profile looks like and basically offers an automatic credit committee, but instantly, right? So if you had five experts deciding whether to provide the loan or not, but through, um, through AI. So in all of this ecosystem, we try to cater for the whole pipeline uh, that companies go through when they try to lend. So thanks for listening to me. I'm Thomas. If you want to scan, scan the QR code, there's all of my contact information. Apologies for the image, but that's the, what, the best we could got. So thank you for listening.